Welcome back to the Robbie Gordon season mode. And, uh, you know, by the way, I like how it's it's morphed into the Robbie Gordon season mode. Screw the game title. It's the definitive Robbie Gordon season mode. You won't see content like this anywhere else on the Internet. No Robbie Gordon seasons. Uh, then again, I think that might be true. But uh, the point standing advantage is I still got it up. 152 points between me and Matt Kenseth. Kenseth being our only somewhat legitimate championship contender at the current moment. We're through with 13 races, so that's halfway, dead halfway actually, in the uh, regular season. Martin Truex Jr. sets third in points, JJ fourth, Biff in fifth. So from Dover, none of the top five deviated, just some of the margins changed. Uh, Dale Jr., sixth position, Dennis in seventh, Big Daddy in eighth, BK in ninth, and Travis Pastrana rounds out your top ten. So those are all the drivers that are really like in the chase for right now. There's two wild card spots. The only driver who could use that wild card spot is David Reagan. He's down 28, so he's got a lot of digging to do to get back up into contention to actually use his uh, Bristol win. And, you know, Danica, after finishing second and third in the Southern 500 and in the Coke 600, uh, she unfortunately did not have a good race at Dover, so she's down to 16th in points. Still within a good chance of making the chase. I mean, look at the margins from 10th all the way down to 18th. You know, not even 30 points. And then last car, Joe Nemechek took over the last car point lead with uh, his 42nd place finish at Dover. Today's video brings us on to Pocono. The first of two Pocono races. This is back when the Pocono races were only separated by like 30 days. So we'll be going back to Pocono sooner than later. Pocono is an interesting racetrack in this game. One of the easier ones, but then again, what track isn't easy at this point? Pocono, weird type of track though to handle. And I'll get into that once we get into qualifying. All right, buddy, head out there and get yourself used to that car. And remember, we're still allowed to tweak the setup before we head into qualifying. Yes, so I've got a custom setup for this track as well. And by the way, when I say that, like, you're witnessing my first experiences with this game, and then it might seem a little bit hypocritical to go and say I also have a custom setup ready, it's because all these tracks I did one test race at, uh, for the most part. Some of them I did more than one, and just developed a custom setup from that one individual race. And I, I'm satisfied enough with what I got at Pocono to where this is what I want to stick with, and I'm confident that uh, we can get a good run out of it. There's some good times being set today, buddy. Make sure yours is one of them. Okay, so I mentioned Pocono is a bit weird, and that's just my driving style of how I handle it in this game. Uh, I clutch and coast every single corner, because when you do that, it kind of tightens the car up just a little bit, because it's not trying to engine brake or anything like that. But uh, I find myself doing it in every single corner. That's fog. That's actual mist you are witnessing. Either that or render distance issues at Pocono, but uh, fitting to have fog at this place. Well, you see right there, I'll go clutch and coast. And then get right back to the throttle. Because I find that the car tries to get just a little bit too loose and try to wreck if I don't do that. Uh, and it lets you kind of back up your corner entry a little better. You know, just like what I mentioned at Dover, the Kyle Petty driving style of lift early so that you're the first guy back to the gas. Uh, I really believe in that, and I think it helps in a lot of tracks, but this one in particular. Fortunately, I use wall markers like that one right there, that Pocono sign. So the car up just a little bit. Mash that throttle. Straightaways are so long at this place. And back when uh, these cars had a crap ton of power, you could really use the straightaway. All right, there we go. Oh, that was a good apex. That was solid. The car committed to doing exactly what I asked it to do. And that's an awesome feeling when you and the car agree with one another, which we just had a disagreement. Not pole, but 10th. I don't think I would have been pole material if I would have not hit the wall either. But I might have, you know, been more in the, like, fifth position area. But still, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with what that lap delivered. All right, got to make sure I don't slam the wall this time. All right, this is actually a better lap. Sixth. All right, I'll work with it. Outside line, that's actually an advantage. Really good drive out there today. Top 10 is great. 
Top 10 is grape. Top 10 is grape. Okay, that just blew my mind. But uh, we're doing good enough, uh, sixth position. I'm happy to have an outside line starting position because the AIs, uh, and actually this goes for reality too, but they bogged down so much on exit of turn one uh, for the start you know, or restart that it's it's just pathetic. So it's it's good to be on the outside line. I was going to be anyway because uh, first lap it was 10th, but uh, I'd rather be up a couple rows so anyway, Casey Kane on pole. He was a great qualifier at places like Pocono and the sort. Uh, Dale Jr. second. This was a year before he went on that tear and uh, won both Pocono races in 2014. Where's Travis? 22nd. Not so good. He's been doing a lot better lately. And dead last is Josh Wise. A 53-73 off three seconds from the pole time. Good luck, pal. Give us a great show. Hi everyone, Mike Joy and Daryl Waltrip welcoming you to the Tricky Triangle, the very unique Pocono International Raceway for today's Pocono 400. Mike, this place is crazy fast. It's unbelievable how fast they're turning this two and a half mile racetrack. Long straightaways. Watch these guys snake their way down through here as they try to pick a draft up off of each other. Daryl, this race 100 miles shorter than last year. Will that make a difference? It's going to make a huge difference. You can go flat out, but one thing you have to always remember, fuel mileage. Keep that in the back of your mind. Right. If you run out of gas on the front straightaway here, it's a long way around this unique trioval. Now, I do want to mention we have the legitimate chance of turning this into a one-stop strategy if I save enough gas, so honestly, that's going to become the intent. But yeah, we have two concerns. Fuel mileage and tire wear. But those are the only things keeping us from pu pulling this off in one stop. And by the way, you know, you know how I said I wanted that outside line? Yeah, that's why. Inside line died so badly. But I'm already up to third. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't overcorrect it. That would have been horribly violent. Way up top. That was actually on purpose. Because I knew the inside lines would bog down. And there it is. Definitely not holding it now. That was for a fraction of a second I had the best lap. Oh, by the way, Dale Jr. leading at Pocono. You're one year early, but you're within the ballpark. Left side's clear. All right, gonna, gonna make the move on him this time. It's all you, baby. We got this. Watch oh, man. Okay, we got the lead, and the goal now, nice as we just set the fastest lap, is to just run away with it, because we've got a legitimate chance of uh, doing a one-stopper out of this race, on the bottom, three back. which would be super three cool if we could do it, because I'm pretty sure the AIs are going to try and do a whole two-stopper, just like they did at Dover in the last uh, you know edition of this series. But uh, in this game, I don't think we're going to be able to lap them you know, by three times just because of how big the track is. But we got a good chance at putting some time on them right now and then take advantage of them having to pit possibly twice. I don't know if they're going to, but uh, they probably will. As you can tell, I'm going for a pretty aggressive fuel-saving strategy just because I want to turn this thing into a one-stop race. So. I'm taking every opportunity I can to, you know, clutch as early as possible. Get back to the throttle a little bit late, but uh, still enough to carry good straightaway momentum, especially in three, because, you know, longest straightaway in NASCAR. Right there is my clutch marker for right now. If I need to save more, I'll lift at the ARCA logo that's on the front straightaway. You know those painted logos? Down the inside, I lifted the ARCA one if I really need to save a lot of gas. 
And uh, just that second Pocono sign if I'm just in normal fuel save mode. The Sprint Cup sign is what I pretty much always clutch at. And nail that throttle in the tunnel turn. And then right there, that brake marker is what I use for uh, turn three. And in saving gas, I am still gapping this entire field. There, I just did it at the Arca logo so that I can save a little bit extra. And now, if I wasn't worried about tire wear, I'd be cutting down these 85,000 feet wide straightaways uh, to make them shorter, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that and add the extra, like, S's on the straightaways without melting the right front tire, because this custom setup, as I always do, I always take a lot of air pressure out of the tires, and that instantly means you're going to wear them more, because... Uh, you know, better contact patch, which means more grip, but also more wear at the same time because you're building up more friction. That's why you have more turn, but uh, you're also wearing off the tires faster. We can do this all day. Like your average Pocono race, not much to say about it. Just kind of gapping the field, trying to save gas, trying to save the right front. Nothing going on. Average Pocono. It's a good view, though. You can at least stare into the Pocono Mountains, stare right into the woods. Can't see Long Pond from inside the track. Got a nearly four-second advantage above Dennis, who is pretty much the modern-day master of Pocono. And still not catching me in full fuel save mode. We're a quarter of the way through this race. Nothing's happening. You know, it's Pocono. Uh, the cars that I said were going to be hilariously slow, though, are hilariously slow, if you notice. I'm actually, like, nearing the ability of lapping some of those guys. They're all the way at the tail end. Uh, you know, within the next couple laps, I'll probably be up to them. Just sound like the front end clipped the ground or something. Did you hear a scrape noise? I don't know what that was. That wasn't edited in. This video might end up being somewhat short, actually, if, like, this little happens. I am losing some time, you know, to Dennis, but... Who cares? I'm saving gas. You know, I'm just saving as much fuel as I possibly can because I might as well turn this race into a one-stop. Lap 14, we got cars coming down pit road. I do not think that's a smart idea at all. That's like a third of the field coming in. Like, even though I'm starting to get really worried about that right front tire, I still need to go, like, 20 laps to, to do this just with a logical fuel strategy. Even though I'm babying this car, I just lapped all those guys. Now, I do have to admit, though, I don't have to be in front of him at all. It's all about perspective. It's how you view things. It's not about being in front now. It's about being in front later. Okay, they don't pay for halfway. At least they don't anymore. Looking low. I mean, Dennis, you can go on by if you want, but me saving gas, I guess I'm still faster than I'm on exit. I don't know. Yeah, still pulling him. This time he's going to get around me. I mean, I'm lifting so much earlier to save gas and to save the right front that, you know, it's better to just let these guys by than to race them anyway because racing them, that's when you start tearing up your stuff. But you got to play it cool. This is, po this is old Pocono. All right, when you won races by being smarter than everybody else, not by being better. Old Pocono strats. Let the AIs pull the strategy and let you pull the strategy. Because the AIs are going to try and do some type of super dumb double stop. And I only got one planned. I don't know about that right front. Yeah. I don't think that right front's going to make it to the end of lap 20, but you know what? You know what? Jesus, Greg. Putting it right up the 88 car. I think I need to try to go for it, though. That's, see, that's the problem. We got to stretch out the fuel and the tires, man. Like, I, I don't know if any of this crap's going to last. Just got to baby it. Now, I, man, I know that'd be cool to come pit this lap. 
gonna get you much farther. Let's get in here and get some new ones. But like it'd be cooler to pit the next. Watch your fuel. You ready to dive in here, buddy? You can you can actually just stop talking. Got one work at the bottom. Alright. Fingers crossed for this next lap, because uh you have fun out there. Man, I don't know. I'm trying so hard not to turn. It's probably going to blow in one. Sometime this lap. All right, now let's see if we lose the tire right this time. No, one that corner. One turn one. Will it be turn two? Probably. Because I don't even see any rubber left on that gauge. Right when I turn in, right? Looking low. Now one turn two. Turn three? Can I get a turn three? Car approaching your rear. Car closing on the inside. We can do this all day. All right, I got to let... Uh, the there it is. Perfect strategy. I don't even know where the commitment line is. There it is. Your tire's completely shredded. We need to switch it out before you can go back out on the track. Man. We can't get fuel anyway, so we might as well put tires on it. Okay, buddy. We're ready for you. Putting a bunch of air pressure in the right side tires, because I don't want to have to do that again. But I babied it to lap 20, and I didn't fully wall it. So that's good news. I, I was expecting it to, like, blow get right ready. into one, nice and then just wreck like Ken Schrader did. In turn one here a bunch of years ago, just flipping and rolling. No, no, I played the strategy about as good as you could play it. Turning onto pit road is when it went, just exploded, but didn't need it anymore. Way to go, boys. Nice. Oh, man. Okay, it's time to push that pace now, buddy. Stay focused. We can do this. The AI tried to wreck me. Report, buddy. Come on. Coming onto the racetrack. So, the strategy, I know it looks bad that I'm in 27th, but trust me, this is going to work. Uh, the reason I dropped back so far is because I was baby in the car not to blow the tire, which I guess I did correctly because, you know, we only blew it right at the end. Now, it's not, the car ain't going to turn quite as good anymore because I uh, put some more air pressure in the right side tires, so it's not going to want to cut nearly as much. And the rest of the field's going to have to pit. We know that because they're, they're stupid. This is NASCAR the game. So everybody's going to pit. We're not going to have to. And uh, hopefully we're just going to go off and win this race. Oh, man. The run was so good I couldn't handle it. Clear lower. Down low. At your door. Okay. Why is Stremi overheating? Nice you saw that, right? Just billowing nice steam out the clear. overflow. Yeah. I mean, listen, I can feel the car not cornering anywhere near as good as it did. But uh, I don't need it to run good. Like, I literally don't. I just need to stay on top of the fuel game. That's kind of the cool thing about the way Pocono races used to go. It was never really one on raw pace. You know, so many of them, especially in the 500-mile era, and to a lesser degree in the 400-mile era before stages, uh, they, they'd go so far into the fuel strategy games, it was like watching the 600. It was crazy. But it used to be, you know, the summer races on the cup schedule would be most of... Mostly the fuel mileage races, like, uh, you know, two dates at Michigan, two dates at Pocono, Indianapolis. You know, it was kind of the summer of fuel mileage. And uh, that was always a topic of discussion throughout the hotter months of the year in, in you know, stock car racing. It's now totally different, but this just brings back memories of, uh, you know, my calculators burning up more so than, like, you know, super crazy racing because these are the types of tracks where it's the strategy that makes the race good. You know what I mean? It's a different aspect of racing as a whole. Still great, but just totally different. That was a tight gap to fit into. I pushed the issue, I'll admit to that, but like I wanted the outside. This car needs like as much room as it can get. Because like now, because I put a bunch of air pressure in the right side tires, like the car's off balance. So it has like more body roll or something. At least it doesn't feel like it wants to, to corner nearly as much. Whoa. Oh yeah, get, get in there. Gotta just be smooth, calm, and four. 
Look at how well that outside line got rolling there because of how much the bottom line bogged down. You know what, I should really just be focused on saving gas instead of going forward. Because, like, I realize I'm starting to get, you know, at a disadvantage on fuel. So I should probably just commit to, you know, my, my same old lift points. See, now we got more cars pitting right into our strategy, including Dennis, who's just pitted as the leader. Okay, so we're going to cycle out in front of all these guys because, you know, we don't have to pit again. There we go, starting to lift at the Arca sign again. He's charging. Just because I want to, you know, make it all the way to the finish, but... It's way worse on time, I can tell you that, but... If it keeps me from having to pit twice, I'll, I'll do anything. Oh, yeah, look at that run. There we go. More cars pitting. I thought I was going to run out of track again. But, uh... See, I'm not trying to pass anybody, you know, that I can't just do naturally because there's no real point in me trying to push the issue when everybody in front of me has to pit, and I don't, so I might as well just baby this race car. Much as I'd love to be passing people, doesn't really make sense for my strategy now, does it? Once again, it's all about perspective. Sure, it'd be cool to be going as fast as possible. You know, sure, it'd be cool to go after the win, you know, kind of the natural or old school way, but... We live in the modern age. We got wind through strats. And then the modern modern day, like the stage era, uh, you no longer have to win through strats. So it kind of looped the counter. But I am going to make this pass, or at least sig signal that I'm going to. Oh, well, he lifted. Lifted just for me to clutch and coast right in his face. And overdrive the corner. There we go. Right front's still worrying me, because it's still wearing a lot more than I'd want it to. But, uh, you know, I put three additional PSI into both right side tires, so I was hoping that'd be enough. I'm still actually, like, subconsciously trying to pass cars, which probably ain't good for my strategy. But you can't knock that out of a driver. I mean, come on. See a car in front of you, you want to go pass it. It's that simple. Oh, look at this scrap. There we go. Just barely weaseled my way in front of McMurray there. That was a close one. I don't even know if that right front's going to last. Honestly, it probably isn't. Car closing on the inside. Well, inside. McMurray, Car front's heading to the pit. you really put it up in there. Clear left. Oh, jeez. Well, I guess that's how you get back into the lead. Closing on the bottom. Inside. That's what I'm talking about. We got the fastest car, the best driver. And there goes McMurray to the pit. And never mind. To go. He was supposed to pit, but I guess decided not to. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a miracle stop. And I still sped. That ain't going to work. See, I came down because I'm 100% sure that uh, those right side tires were not going to last. I think I actually, by putting more air pressure in the right sides, I made myself use the right side tires more. You tell me I didn't speed? What? You're, you're kidding. I executed that like an actual professional? What? That is awesome. Man, you're making it look easy from up here. Get out of the way. I'm on a mission from God. Go right, give me that lane. I don't believe for a second I wasn't speeding. That's crazy. I mean, that's awesome, but it's crazy, too. Go low, go low. Ooh, man, Matt Kenseth. 
Like, I was barely there. I could have forced the issue on him. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. All right, going to need Dave Blaney to get shook out of this instantly because he's going to really screw us up. <laughs> the grass right there almost thought I was going to wreck. Oh, man. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going with the lane with Dave Blaney in it. Well, then again, I think I actually am. He's got a really fast straightaway car for some ungodly reason. Come on. Outside. Mm. Put that thing up on the top. All right, now all of a sudden, Dave Blaney ain't fast on the straightaway. Oh, 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 on that right rear, look at that. One on the bottom. Five to go. All right, here we go. One car between us and victory, and it's Dennis, the master of Pocono. Watch your inside. One but today he's more low. like Dennis, my menace. Mm, Travis Quapple. Go low. Man, I thought he was going to wreck us there. Okay, gotta set him up. Oh, yeah. We're on the high side. Bump and run at Pocono. Jerry Mayfield set that precedent, but I just took it to the limit. How you like that precision two-tire stop that I pulled out of absolute nowhere? I was going for a one-stopper, as I mentioned, but the fact that I put more air pressure in the right side tires actually made the car turn worse, thus making me have to put more wheel into it to turn. So even knowing that because I put more air pressure in the right side tires, they should have worn less, the fact that I had to turn the car more meant I was wearing them worse. Strategy, man. And so from there, I had to make a last minute decision to, to come down pit road again and put on right sides. I also did a splash of gas so I don't have to worry about fuel mileage. So. You know, you got to be willing to change your strategy by the drop of a hat. And uh, I, I think I've just proved that. Doing great. Nice and steady. Second place is way back. That's also the first time I think I've ever taken two tires in this game, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's paying off. Right oh, there you go. How do you like bump drafting with lap cars? That's what every leader of a race should do. Highly recommended. All right, at this point, I'm just hoping to get to the white flag. <laughs> That's all I'm doing right now. Scott Speed up in front of us, the only lap car we're going to have to deal with. And from there, I actually got clear track, which is really, really cool and convenient. All right, come on, though. Just get me past Scott Speed, please. There. Right side's clear. There we go. All right, no lap traffic for a country mile, and uh, we're coming to the white. Car one back, and you're clear. White flag, there we go, we got it, race is official. Whatever you're doing, you just keep doing it. Hey, Kevin Harvick's taking over second. Something happened to Dennis, I guess. Either that or uh, you know, Kevin just got the best of him, probably in traffic, if I had to guess. It's been really bad, you know, during the pit cycle. So here we come. Pocono Raceway at another one we just conquered. But I also have to mention that I did it on a strategy I didn't even plan on doing that. I pulled out a two-tire stop that I thought I sped on. I, I, I'm going to have to go through the footage and see how I didn't. But we did it. Pulling strategies right out of a hat. There we go. Yeah. This one... Could have went really bad if I wouldn't have done that uh, kind of somewhat gamble strategy, or gamble, as I would put it. Man, that's awesome to get this one. Not because Pocono has anything too special to me. It's just uh, the first time I ever put on right side tires in this game, and it actually pays off. Because if I would have taken four, I would have been too far back to actually do anything with it. So th the right side tire call was actually the correct decision, which is that's the wild part about it is I made the right call 
wonder if I can hit the barrels without pitting. Did it! And a really good drift. Man, that car went from like 190 to zero in, in .1 seconds. That'd probably be a, uh, a severe concussion. And it's gonna blow up now. <laughs> You're the man. Now. 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 There it is. Down, Finally. I've been here for like eight minutes <laughs> trying to blow up this car. I was beginning to think I'd have to just put like a CG effect on it. That's a win. Another one. The first ever like successful two tire stop I think I've ever pulled. In any game, actually. Maybe some of the EA ones. That was incredible. Victory Lane suits you, buddy. But even when referring to the EA ones, this is the first ever, like, successful two-tire stop I've ever done outside of a super speedway. Because, you know, those games, you just, you do the Eric Jones strategy of just take right sides. But this is actually a right side tire strategy that pays off at Pocono, which is just awesome. Uh, Kevin Harvick took second. Dennis dropped down to third. Uh, those two had a good scrap. Uh, Biffle in fourth, Dale Jr. fifth, championship contender Kenseth, sixth position, BK seventh, Stewart eighth, Travis Pastrana in ninth, at a track where you actually have to drive, and Jimmy Johnson rounds out the top ten. Man, Joe Nemechek is really going after that last car championship. Obviously last place finisher, Michael McDowell, but Nemco slow over here, 41st, and Travis Quapple 31st. Quapple's getting outside of championship contention. Look at the Pocono fog. Majestic. All right, so that's another one. 13 wins and 14 races. First ever successful two-tire pit stop, though. The point advantage is 162 points, which is just wild for being, you know, 14 races in. Uh, Matt Kenza still second in points. Then we have MTJ, Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle. So the top five has been unchanged for the last two races. So that might be five pretty solid chase contenders. Dennis, sixth position. Uh, Dale Jr., seventh. BK in eighth. Jeff Gordon down in ninth. And Travis still holds on to tenth, which is pretty impressive. Last car, though. Look at Nemco Slow doing really good in that championship. Now with a great advantage above Travis Quapple. And so anyway, that does it for today's edition of the Robbie Gordon Season Mode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You learned some things, hopefully, about how to save fuel, how to get to pit road with a blown tire, how to maximize your pit road entry, and how to win with a two-tire pit stop. Hopefully it was very educational. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I've got a Patreon set up as well. Don't miss out on more NASCAR The Game 2013 content and whatever else I come up with in the future.